The role that is by far the least likely to blame themselves for losing lane has got to be ADC. A billion excuses exist for why ADC players lose lane. Their support runs it down, they get ganked by everyone, their jungler threw at Scuttle or Dragon, etc. While a lot of these excuses are actually sometimes valid, when we check out low elo games, the ADC players are almost always losing games not because of others, but through their own ridiculous actions. And this guide will put you to the test. Are you like a bad ADC who throws their lane constantly, or do you actually play like a good one and have the right to use all the previous excuses? So let's find out. As we said, let's put your knowledge to the test instantly and jump right into a diamond elo game. For this one, we've got a Jinx and Blitzcrank pair walking into bot to get the laning phase started. As they do though, they're ambushed by the enemy Aphelios and Lulu who were hiding in the lane brush. That cheese may have worked against any other champion but Blitzcrank who hooks Aphelios into the blue wave. This of course spells disaster for the enemy duo and they're quickly on the run. And here's the moment of truth. If you were Jinx, what do you think you would do at this moment? Do you keep chasing for the kill, or do you back off and play for something else instead? So a good ADC would know to instantly back off here, and let's see why. Jinx was so tunnel visioned on the kill that she didn't factor in that Aphelio still had both his summoners available to continue kiting. Not only that, but now she's the one walking into the enemy's wave while her blitz is useless without his hook. Although they had a huge initial advantage, the all-in wasn't even close and Jinx goes from having one of the best starts possible to completely throwing the lane. Now, the problem here isn't so much this very specific throw from the Jinx. In your own games, you're unlikely to be in this exact situation too often. The issue we want to tackle is that players play way too much in the moment and don't really know how to convert leads. If Jinx was confident and a good ADC player, then she would know that at this exact moment there is zero reason to risk an all-in. Her lane is already guaranteed to be won, if she knows how to appropriately follow up from here. So let's take a look at an actual good ADC in a very similar situation to see how they handled things. Much like the previous Aphelios, Draven is looking to cheese from the brush as his opponents get into lane but he's only doing so because the matchup is actually favorable in this case. The second Zareth gets into lane, Nautilus lands his hook, and they immediately force his flash. Draven will show restraint and not keep chasing, of course, since there's no way that he would kill Zareth here. As a challenger player, Draven has already shown that he won't be committing either of the mistakes that both ADCs made last game. You only cheese if you can actually bully your opponents past their wave, and he of course knows when to back off. Now that he has early lane control, if you're Draven in this situation, what do you think you do to guarantee an advantage moving forward? Here's a hint. It has to do with a wave tactic that we bring up very often in our guides. A three wave crash is what you should have immediately thought of, and it's precisely what Draven aims to do this game. Let's quickly go over the benefits for why it's a guaranteed advantage. For starters, you get to set up an early dive with your jungler on the third wave. Since your opponent is already low, this should be easy to execute. We know, we know though that your jungler won't ever do that in lower elos, which is why the second benefit is just as good. You can go for a cheater recall and come back to lane. This way, you have guaranteed item advantage and the wave is pushing toward you. This should mean that you can look for all-ins or set up a freeze with your item advantage. That's the option Draven goes for since his jungler wasn't around for the dive. He buys another longsword and comes back to lane to the wave pushing into him. Of course, he has the benefit of being in Challenger Elo where his Nautilus and Udyr set up a free kill onto Zareth. Although it wasn't Draven that made this play, it was obviously his great wave control that enabled his teammates to do so in the first place. But hungry to prove himself, he takes matters into his own hands moments later. He flashes on top of the enemy Ezreal, solo killing him and establishes complete lane control with his superior biceps. As you can see in Challenger, it's never about mechanics. It's the simple macro concepts that we teach that enable players to carry more often. All right, let's move on to another common issue we see from lower ELO ADCs. In low ELO, players often complain about their supports running it down during the laning phase. How can you possibly win if your support is always dying for free, right? Well, we're not going to say that that isn't true, but there is a very common trend that we notice when that happens. 
Whenever their support is dying randomly, bad ADCs almost never take advantage of the situation at all, and let's show you what we mean. During this lane, the Caitlyn we'll be reviewing was doing kind of okay. She could have probably been harassing Twitch a little more with her range advantage, but the lane is at least stable. This is until her Blitzcrank walks into lane past his own minion wave, gets hooked, and all in. Of course, this isn't Caitlyn's fault, but let's watch what she does. Since Blitz is the one being focused, she gets to free fire onto the enemy pike. Unfortunately, she tunnel visions way too hard on finishing the kill when there was absolutely no way that she'd ever finish off a pike with his W active. In doing so, she allowed the enemy Twitch to flash forward himself to finish off Blitzcrank and claim the free kill. Let's first address something. This is literally the same mistake that we saw from the previous Jinx. You've got to know when a kill isn't happening and that it's time to back off. It's insane how often we see this silly mistake lose games for players. Not only is Caitlyn trolling, but the enemy Twitch literally made the same mistake too. If Caitlyn hadn't been so tunnel visioned and instead pressed teal on her Blitzcrank, then he'd probably have enough HP to make it to the middle brush. In that case, Twitch can't finish him off. Then, Twitch would just be stuck tanking a lethal tempo Caitlyn and likely lose most of his health bar running back to his tower. So, let's recap everything Caitlyn did wrong. First, at the start as Blitz is walking up, she is way too far behind. If your support is looking like they're about to int, then walk up just enough so that you can actually hit your opponents as they kill your support. Because Caitlyn was so far behind, she actually had to waste time walking forward instead of DPSing as the fight begins. Obviously, the trap miss is bad, but that's understandable. We've already talked about the overcommitment onto Pike, but her final mistakes were definitely just as bad. She wasted way too many auto attacks here. Not only that, but she doesn't understand proper auto weaving since she traps, then autos instead of auto trap. Remember, as an ADC, you generally want to auto attack someone and then while your auto animation is cooling down, you cast a spell. That way, during the animation, your auto attack comes back up and you can maintain optimal DPS. Basically, her positioning, target selection, and damage output were all awful. A good ADC could probably get a double kill here. In fact, let's compare what Caitlyn did to an actual high elo ADC in a very similar situation. During this lane, Jinx and Thresh are playing very close to each other. That's because if Leona engages onto Thresh, Jinx wants to be able to help ASAP, but also so that Thresh can peel off Leona with his flight. And that's precisely how a fight breaks out. Here's a quick question to test your fighting skills. Who do you focus as Jinx in this fight based on what you see? Leona should be the obvious answer. She's already low and tanking every skill shot by standing in front of Jin. Not only that, but she's in too deep to ever kite a wave to safety. By targeting Leona, it's a guaranteed kill for Jinx. Jin, on the other hand, could easily kite away if need be. Anyway, Jinx finishes the enemy Leona and then manages to barely kill Jin as well thanks to her passive. With great gameplay, she turns the play around flawlessly. This is a perfect contrast to the previous Caitlyn. Unlike her, Jinx had good positioning to help her teammate instantly. Her target selection was never wrong, and she was actually auto-weaving properly the entire time. She only cast W once her auto attack was on cooldown, which was vital since every bit of DPS mattered in order to secure these kills. We don't want to exaggerate and say that every time your support ints that you could have done something. Sometimes your Nami will die literally instantly to Nautilus and Draven. But in a ton of cases, if your support is inting, you can definitely use the time that your opponents are focusing them to your advantage. Be the Jinx who does everything well, not the Caitlyn who lets her support's inting go to waste. And moving on to our final point, we will say that it's a good thing that Riot is finally changing teleport so that it can't be used to teleport to other lanes quite so easily. If there is one thing ADCs complained the most about, it's how often they got 5 manned in bot. While teleport ganks were frustrating and very hard to play around, dying to really obvious ganks should have no excuse. And yet, when reviewing low elo, almost every single gank we see players die to is obscenely obvious. For example, in this next game we'll be reviewing, take a look as Ezreal is pushing very aggressively into his opponents. Notice how on the minimap that both Vex and Kindred are pushing mid together. After they're done pushing though, they literally do not bother hiding their intentions. They don't fake recall or feign that they're going top instead. No, 
No, they just make it super obvious that they're walking toward bottom. This is a platinum level game where you'd expect players to look at their minimap a bit more, but Ezreal decides it's the perfect time to E forward to deal irrelevant damage. Needless to say, this baited both he and Xerath to overstay in the lane, his support ends up going down instantly and Ezreal dies toward the end of the encounter as well. We're not going to sit here and show you how a high elo ADC utilizes basic map awareness to evade a gank. That's obviously something that you should work on, and there are plenty of tools out there to increase your map awareness, such as those YouTube videos that ding to remind you to check your map. Instead, let's take a look at a high elo game and see how capable a challenger ADC is at reading gank timings. Pay close attention this time to see if you're just as good, if not better, than a challenger player at tracking the enemy jungler. Let's cover the information you need to know to answer our upcoming question. At the start, Lucian Xin Zhao starts bot side to get a leash on blue. As they leash, Lucian gets key information on the enemy jungler. The enemy top laner is missing, meanwhile the bot duo is immediately in lane. This is a very clear sign that the enemy Lee Sin likely started topside. Moving things forward a bit, as Lucian lanes, his Vex has mid prio and moves in toward Lee Sin's Raptors. Vision on the enemy jungle is something that you'll sometimes get every now and then, but the ward hasn't spotted Lee, so it hasn't gotten too much value. And as we move things forward, we'll just go ahead and let you know that Lee still hasn't shown himself on the map. Meanwhile, Lucian Zin is just passively farming all of his jungle. Okay, so let's recap all that information concisely. Number one, Lee probably started top. Number two, there's a ward on Raptors that hasn't spotted him yet. Number three, he hasn't ganked any lanes. And finally, Xin Zhao has managed to full clear without any problems. Knowing all of that, as Nami lands a great bubble onto Lulu, do you think you'd keep going and commit to the kill as Lucian, or would you back off at this moment? Backing off should be your immediate instinct. Sadly, even a challenger player wasn't aware of that and dies an avoidable death. We know at skill cap that we hype up pros and challenger players all the time, but even they have stuff they fail miserably at. A big one is how bad everyone who doesn't main jungle is at tracking the opposing jungler. Most challenger players have great map awareness and instantly know where the enemy jungler is if they show themselves on the map. But many of them are pretty bad at tracking junglers who they haven't directly seen. If you answered correctly though, then you should know just how easy this skill is to learn. If Lee started top, didn't invade Xin Zhao, didn't gank yet, and he hasn't shown on Raptors, then that can only mean one thing. He's obviously doing a fast level 3 route and then looking to set up a gank instead of clearing his entire jungle. If you were able to assess that easily, congrats, you're better at tracking junglers than most challenger players. That being said, if you feel like you constantly die to jungle ganks, then we would recommend just checking out some of our jungle route videos. Sometimes the key to getting better at your own role is literally just understanding at least the basics of other roles so that you know how to counter them. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap this guide up. But how did you do overall? Do you still think you're a good ADC or do you have a lot to work on after this video? Remember you get our skill capped excuse approval if you got every question right. Being able to shamelessly say that your team is what's holding you back was obviously the main goal in this video, so congrats to everyone who earned it. So you might be asking yourself why go to skillcap.com to improve when I could just watch YouTube guides or play the game. Well, let me show you. Let's say you're an AD carry who's struggling to climb the ladder. Not only would you get over 55 site exclusive courses for AD carry, but maybe really what you've been struggling with is wave control in bot lane. Well, we got you covered with six different courses breaking down wave control as an AD carry. Not only do we have the largest catalog of guides for League of Legends in the entire world with over 1500 videos to watch, but these are then curated by the top coaches and players into courses on every skill and topic you need to master in order to truly improve and climb the ladder. If all of this wasn't enough, we haven't even touched on our catalog of over 700 smurf commentaries, where a challenger expert shows you how to climb out of your rank and you're guaranteed to get any questions answered by them directly. Not to mention, we're the only service to offer a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to Skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.